Hey, Harris, give me some of your tots. No, go find your own. Come on, man, just give me some of your tots. No, I'm freaking starved. I haven't had anything today. Oh, God. Gross. Freaking idiot. Hey y'all, I almost named my dog after this beauty right here. Then I thought of a better name, or I'll say a different name. Point is, brisket is king. We're gonna start by trimming the brisket with this handy dandy fillet knife. Because it's curved, it makes it really easy to cut out those little slivers of fat on a relatively flat surface. Start by trimming the brisket from the thickest part of the fat cap, thick with like three or four C's. You can see I started from the point end here. I'll link y'all to some other info in the description that'll help y'all with the anatomy. The first rule of thumb I generally go by is to leave about a quarter inch of fat on top. The second is to slice and pull horizontally. Third, remove any crusty brown meat, silver skin, or pieces that stick out. Those will burn faster than me in the Gold Coast with no sunscreen or an ozone layer. I'm really working these love handles. The decal is a huge layer of fat that separates the point and the flat. And unless you really like huge chunks of fat that don't melt in your mouth and you have to chew on for a long time, I suggest you aggressively trim this out. All right, now that this baby is trimmed up and ready for the big show, let's go to the number one question I always get. What seasoning do I use? It's just salt, pepper, a lot of time, and a little love. One last thing, you don't need a binder. Please don't use mustard, trust me, it's nasty. Also, don't rub your meat, just pat it down. Okay, enjoy the rest of this quick powder montage. Now that your meat's all dolled up, if you're doing this the night before like I did, dry brine it by putting it on a wire rack to permit airflow and moisture absorption from the air through the salt. Okay guys, that took way longer than I thought it would. As you can tell by the time, First time filming a full video like this, so it happens. I'm gonna hit the sack, the better for that, and continue tomorrow. Or today. Hey y'all, it's about 1 p.m., kinda late, but I wanted to show you guys my smoker. I've got a 22 inch Weber kettle, I don't have a trigger, which would be super nice for a 20 pound brisket like I've gotten there to just set and forget. But you can use a super affordable grill like this to smoke meats. You just have to use the snake method. Don't worry, there's no snakes. Start by cleaning up your smoker of the ash and used up wood and charcoal if you didn't already do that after your last smoke, like Miley's gas. You can reuse the charcoal and wood that you still have, but add more charcoal. Then stack in a 2x2 two two like I do here, two on top, two on bottom. The closer you place them together, the hotter your smoke will be because they'll ignite one after another like a falling row of dominoes. The same concept goes for the wood too. You can use wood chunks or wood tips, but I prefer wood chunks because I've had more success with getting this synced thin blue smoke, which is essential for forming a really nice deep bark. Ignite your charcoal chain. I used a fire starter here. Put in a water pan and boil some water. The water is going to help as a heat sink and stabilize the temperature and pull the hot smoke down to allow more contact with the meat. Temperature probes are your best friend also. You'll see I place one on each side. The reason for this is because as the charcoal chain ignites around the circle, the temperature of one probe will decrease and the other will increase. This will let me know when it's time to turn the grate. Because after all, as the old saying goes, So 
back to turning the grate. The reason why we want to turn the grate is to keep the meat as far away as possible from the heat source. We're trying to cook this baby low and slow on indirect heat, not hot and fast. Notice that when I open the smoker sparingly, probably about once every one and a half to two hours, I always keep the burning charcoal and wood on one side and the meat and exhaust vent on top on the other side directly. I start spritzing with an apple cider and water mixture once the brisket turns a deep mahogany red, but no sooner than three hours because too much moisture early on will prevent the mild reaction and formation of the pellicle that will turn to the beautiful bark that people search wide and far for. Once you do start spritzing, just know that it's not really to keep the meat moist. <clears throat> But rather, I think it more so helps catch smoke and form the bark even better. To simplify things, I smoke it in the smoker until the bark forms like I want it. And this right here is perfect. At this point, wrap it in butcher paper, which I prefer over foil. Because while both help lock in moisture, foil totally prevents moisture permeation and leads to the brisket being steamed and having the texture of braised meat. If you followed along to what I'm doing here, wrapping is pretty simple. Fold the paper over once and tuck it under. Fold the sides over once at 45 degrees and then again at 90 degrees. Fold the meat over the paper and then the sides once again. Finally, fold the meat over once more and tuck in the paper below. Place your probes at the thickest part of the flat or where the incline starts. These are like the bows to make sure your brisket is like the most perfectly wrapped crisp present your grandma did for you. Set and forget between 225 and 285. Some say brisket needs to reach 203 degrees to be done cooking. The truth is that it needs to sit above 165 degrees internal for six to eight hours to render the fat all the way down. If you go too much longer than this, the brisket will lose its texture and you'll think you're eating food someone made for you if they thought you had no teeth. Here is said beef fat, aka tallow. These are the trimmings from the beginning and I've got a special use for them. But I'm gonna be quiet so y'all can watch and listen to me make and pour this beautiful liquid gold. Oh, and unwrap the brisket, one of the greatest joys that can be had in life. That might be the best, best brisket I've ever made. And I say that every time. <laughs> Hope you all enjoyed that snippet of me being a fat ass. Now I want to move on to slicing the brisket. I don't have enough time here to get into the details, but here are a few things. The left side is majority flat, the lean side. The right side is majority point, the fatty side. You always want to cut against the grain, so you'll notice that I rotate perpendicularly when I switch over to slicing the point. The proper thickness of slices should be the width of a pencil, and the outsides of the point are typically cubed into what we call burnt ends. Hands down, my favorite part of the brisket, and possibly favorite bite in all of barbecue. And if you're looking for a more concrete, visual way to tell the brisket is done, here's the bend test. Yeah, that's on point. <laughs> See what I did there? Okay, fellas and ladies, we've made it to the home stretch. We're gonna start by making some of the ban ran, aka ban cam dough that I made in my previous video. Water, sugar, baking powder, potato flakes, rice flour, glutinous rice flour. Thank you at Ravenous Couple on Instagram for the recipe, which I'll also be sharing on my site very soon. Remember that liquid gold we had earlier? Yeah, here's where it comes into play. But first, let's make our bun mi. Pretty self explanatory, so I'll let y'all watch. That's right, we're frying Vietnamese breaded brisket in brisket tallow. There's no such thing as too much beefiness. First up is the Vietnamese banh mi. We'll put laughing cow cheese, a staple in my family. 
Try some QP mayo on the other half. Pate, another must have. Y'all, which is Vietnamese ham and might freak some of y'all out. But don't knock it till you try it. And of course, all the refreshing garnishes. Cilantro, dochua, aka pickled carrots and daikon, and cucumber. I forgot to film the second one, but that one's a Japanese one. I spent my last paycheck on some uni and roe, and that one honestly is the definition of treat yourself. Moving on, I wanted to make a spin on the classic avocado toast. It ain't broke, so I didn't try to fix it. Just some avocado, a couple sunny side up eggs, and some salt and pepper. Lastly, I tend to go overboard in life if left unchecked. So that's what I wanted to do with this one. <laughs> some brie, sweetened condensed milk, leftover durian pork belly from my last cook, some furikake on my Japanese one that I forgot, and then a shit ton of sugar, which I crambouilleed. <laughs> Guys, blow torches are so cool. And that's all, folks. Just kidding, we have a tasting too. In a Rivian, I might add. Okay, well, we can try some brisket. I'm gonna take a burnt end. I think I'm gonna take a, take a little strip here. I'm gonna one bite it. Does that remind you of Oklahoma? <laughs> it's a little piece of home. <laughs> Do they have a lot of barbecue in Oklahoma? A lot of party barbecue in Oklahoma. Brisket specifically is probably my favorite. Yeah, the fattiness, because beef fat is so much different from pork fat. Like it has a different smell and flavor. I didn't know like the etymology or whatever the word wording behind it, but beef fat is called tallow and pork fat is called lard. When I smoked this, I trimmed off like maybe four or five pounds of fat. I had like a giant pot of tallow and these things that we're about to eat, I actually fried them in the beef tallow. <laughs> it's going to taste like extra beefy. All right, cool, cool. So. I guess I didn't know that lard was pork fat. Yeah. Because I've always I, heard of things being cooked in lard. <laughs> yeah, and then like people call people lard ass and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what I got called a lot when I was a kid. Did you really? It's like um, playful, <laughs> making fun of you sort of thing. And like in Vietnamese, they called me mop dit, which basically means like fatty or lard ass, like in like a playful way. Or, yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, either that or toy dit, which means pretty much like stinky or something. Because okay. like, I guess my farts would stink when I was a kid. So, yeah, I had a lot of those types of nicknames. This is very fitting, then. Because you are what you eat, right? All right. Straight from the air fryer. Okay, so you have... Uh, I think there's four or five different concoctions back there. Um, I've got four. This here is brisket coated in the bun ran dough that I made last week for the other recipe that I shared. I fried that in beef tallow. And there's a piece of brisket in here. You probably can't see it because it's too dark. And then on top of the bun mi that I made, bun mi means bread, uh, for this one I put brie durian barbecue sauce i made last week pork belly that's on top and then i put some more sugar on top use my blowtorch to caramelize it into a creme brulee sort Sorry, of thing sweet. might be a little bit of an overload but sweet salty sugary yeah fatty i mean if you got any crunch in there because i took a bite like, damn, I didn't, like, I saw the creme brulee forming with the blowtorch, but I didn't think it was actually going to be crunchy, and I got, like, a piece of crunch in there, and it was good. Oh, shit, okay. This one, out of all of them, I put, like, 
so many different flavors on, so it might be a little bit hard to. There's a lot, yeah, words. going on. If you've never had durian before, like you've probably been wondering, like what? So. The uh, what's the dough? Glutinous rice flour, rice flour, water. It's a syrup. good vessel for all of the meat and everything. Yeah, I'm saying. I, yeah, I was just thinking like, oh, well, Vietnamese has some chewy stuff too. And then I thought about the bun ran, which is like the chewy sesame ball that has mung bean inside. Oh bad. And I was like, you know, why don't I just make that? But instead, I put my pork belly inside, and then all the Vietnamese garnish. And that's where that idea came from. This video could be an advertisement for Rivian. I think so. <laughs> This is the bun mi one. It's got the same brisket bread, and then it's got pate, and then laughing cow cheese and or QP mayo, which is a Japanese thing. Vietnamese people growing up, we use laughing cow cheese a lot on bread, like French bread. And then we put pate, and then we put the Vietnamese ham, which is this white little thing here. And then I just put the garnish, classic Vietnamese garnishes. I think what they should do for this is like have like one of those um, slide out tables that you can, if I had a table right here, yeah. pulled it out and flipped it over my lap, man. Yeah, I like that one. More balanced, I think. A lot more, yeah. It's kind of cool like hearing the crunch too as you're biting it. Yeah, it's just like everything's brought back a little bit more. I think that's the right way to describe it, like brought back. The other one is just like, I went, I went hard in one direction. Yeah. And that was it. Like, the sugar, the fat, the creaminess, like the indulgent stuff, that's it. This one has like the vegetables and the garnish, um, and then the acidity too, to cut through like the fattiness of the brisket and the really greasy dough that I fried in beef tallow. What I really wanted to do was take Vietnamese food and things that I grew up eating and that when I think about like they make me really happy and gives me good memories yeah but like, brisket also gives me happiness and like reminds me of my brother but to have a piece of brisket that is smoked also like Texas style um that changes the texture a lot and then like leaves a lot of the fat in there too it gives it more richness and to then put that into a Vietnamese dish and then also like completely change it up like the shape like this yeah like i just wanted to see what it would taste like whenever i have an idea like this i always ask my mom like would that be good and then she's like no that'd be disgusting <laughs> I'm like well, how do you know though like it sounds pretty good to me like, i think i'm just gonna make it and then find out mm. that one after the last one like you almost got doing in that order Forgot to mention that there is pate in your French liver spread. Oh, okay. I was telling him like what's in the bun mi deep. If there's no pate or like the egg aioli of some kind or laughing cow cheese or mayo or something, they probably don't know what they're doing. That one's just got laughing cow cheese. And I also wonder like if other Vietnamese families use that. My family did. After the one with all the fats, sugars yeah. and everything. Yeah, you gotta have the it's Refreshing. Thing. I don't eat like that every day. If you count the hours I was sleeping and the brisket was in the oven, it took me about 28 hours to make these. I feel like the ratio is not quite there, but I think it, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to know about the 28 hours. Yeah. So I've got two options. The, the first one is just um, one that has uni, roe, you know what those are? Uni is um, sea urchin. It's a Japanese, like really creamy orange thing. Okay. It's pretty expensive, but I, I think sea urchins would attack you if they could, but they just don't have legs underneath them, right? They're, sea urchins are the black, <laughs> the spiky. I don't know what those are, but really? they sound like something that would attack I, you. I always knew them as like uh, they're on the like bed of the ocean floor, like kind of in reefs, like areas or whatever, and then they're like just black and spiky. I think you. But, were right. I mean, eventually, I think they sort of. Make, I don't know how they like what they come from, but they always look very like. They're not predators, but like they just look dangerous. Yeah. So these are what from sea urchins? It's the inside, probably not the black spiky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I figured I'd make this a Japanese themed one. Yeah. Um, in addition to the Vietnamese dough and the uh, Texas brisket, this one actually looks really cool. That's crazy. So. The brisket is still with this one, right? The brisket yeah. is still inside. I did not make a single piece of this bread without brisket inside. And then I also put some furikake on top, which is like a Japanese seaweed and sesame sprinkle. Cheers. Mm. 
pictures. Look at that. Immediately. It's got a lot of smells, a lot of aromas. I just feel like I'm eating sushi and barbecue at the same time yeah. in the best way. Oh my gosh. No, that was the right move. This is my favorite so far. On top is the row, like the little okay. balls. Then the orange thing that I spread out underneath the okay. salmon -y. Okay. Yeah, I thought those were fish eggs or something. I think, that technically, that's, I think that's what row is. That's what row is. But here I am just talking like I know stuff, but. Thank you. Like 50% is probably wrong. <laughs> Where'd you get these? It's smart. The, the stuff on top? Yeah. Heavy in the right. Yeah, it's smart. It's a Korean grocery store. There's one here, two in Koreatown. They have all sorts of stuff. Like they have some Chinese and Vietnamese stuff there too. I wouldn't know how to prepare them, but I feel like you could eat them by themselves. Oh, you definitely could, yeah. A lot of times they just go on rice. Yeah, that's why it's, uh, it's kind of interesting to like see it. See how it tastes with so many other like flavors that also stand out on mm -hmm. their own. Brisket does its own thing. It can stand alone by itself. Yeah, that's a good point. Here you have the brisket, which is a super beefy, fatty flavor. And then also the beef tallow, the dough is fried in. So that's like going right ahead with the fishy flavor, but I'm I'm happy with how it turned out. Yeah. As far as beef beef fats, like brisket is probably like my favorite. It's hard to beat a ribeye like steak with fat oh, as well. Yeah, yeah. But fish fats, like sam the skin on salmon, like that's the kind of fishy like flavor this has. But yeah, it's just wanting to have them both together. Being a ribeye, that's something I always <laughs> want to do is that beef tallow I have at home, I can reuse for like egg rolls and some other Vietnamese stuff. But like, I want to reverse here ribeye in beef tallow. Like instead of like using olive oil and butter. <laughs> instead of that healthy shit. <laughs> Yeah. Let's see how good this thing is. Yeah, let's let's beef it up all the way 100%. You want just a steak here or you want steak with more steak fat? <laughs> I know, it sounds like it'd be pretty good to me. <laughs> no, I feel like that would be really good. If you want to use canola oil or vegetable oil or even like beef tallow because, because it has a lower smoke point, which means it turns into smoke at a lower temperature than... Um, olive oil, canola oil.